The very best currency loses 99.5% or 99.8% of its value over 100 years. Every other currency loses 100% of its value over 100 years. If everybody completely rationally embraced this thing, Bitcoin would cost you $3 million a coin and you would lose, you know, the next 20x opportunity for you. So you, you almost don't want them to figure it out too fast because otherwise you're the stupid money. I'd rather be the smart money and wait for the stupid money to learn over the course of five to 10 years, because we need someone to be buying this stuff when it hits $5 million a coin, Anthony. We're, we're still in the stage of adoption where, there's, where there is friction and there's prejudice and there is fear, right? There is, so I think, I think we can all agree that there's, there's still that, but the, but it, the indicia, right? The indicia of institutional adoption and uh, and the likelihood that the institution and the establishment embrace this has never been clearer than it is today. Let's say it's going to be a 36 month, 24 month, 36 month, 48 month delay before banks catch up. But smaller banks are embracing, are offering Bitcoin services. The larger banks, not yet, but. You know, Morgan Stanley, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, there are parts of those banks that are very reactionary and they push back. And on the other hand, you know, another part of Morgan Stanley ends up owning $500 million worth of my stock, right? At the same time that the part of Morgan Stanley doesn't want anybody to buy your fund. And so these are, you know, these are not monolithic conglomerates, right? These tend to be massive organizations with a hundred different divisions each of them making independent decisions and yeah. you got to figure yeah, economically month by month it. month by month it's we went over a new uh, a new individual a new leader a new executive uh, division every month and we that'll continue for the decade i guess yeah from 2022 to 2030 i think that's how long it takes for a lot of these major financial institutions to rewire their thinking and their plumbing and their risk controls. And what about, what, what about, by the way, we could complain about that or we could revel in it. The, the good fortune there is if everybody completely rationally embraced this thing, Bitcoin would cost you $3 million a coin and you would lose, you know, the next 20 X opportunity for you. So you, you almost don't want them to figure it out too fast because otherwise you're the stupid money. I'd rather be the smart money and wait for the stupid money to learn over the course of five to 10 years because we need someone to be buying this stuff when it hits $5 million a coin, Anthony. I think the sovereign wealth funds will come first. I, I, I mean, the first adoption will be any sovereign wealth fund like, uh, you know, UAE or Saudi Arabia or Norway or Switzerland that would hold big tech stocks. If you would if you would hold $10 billion worth of Apple or Google or Facebook or Amazon, I think some of those will roll into Bitcoin because it's just another tech investment for them. And it's and it's totally within their mandate. I think that I think that some countries are being forced to consider other payment options. I mean, the, you know, like the Russians are being forced. You don't if you get kicked off of Swift. You know that that drives and catalyzes something, and then I think, you know, I, I think it'll be a while, but we're really waiting for a small, mid-sized company that has its own currency to print its currency and buy Bitcoin. I don't think it's a this year thing or a next year thing, but at some point somebody will figure it out. If you if you're selling fifty billion dollars worth of commodities or exports every year, and you're using the dollar is your treasury reserve asset. You're propping up a hundred trillion dollar currency that's that's you know inflating at 10, 15, 20 percent a year. So that that's just shipping. That's in essence shipping all of your treasury uh, to the dollar over the course of a decade. If you switch that and you started buying CNY, you'd be propping up the Chinese currency instead of pro instead of propping up a hundred trillion dollar currency, you'd be propping up a twenty or thirty trillion dollar currency, and that's to the benefit of the Chinese. If you switch to gold, you would be propping up a twelve trillion dollar currency, and if you switch to Bitcoin, 
you would be propping up a less than one trillion dollar currency. So if people were rational, I don't think they are, by the way. Luckily for us, 98% of them aren't because you couldn't be in the top 2% if everybody else was as smart or smarter than you, could you, right? So, so I guess uh, they're not really totally rational, but if you were rational, you know, the obvious thing to do if you're an export country is you start exporting in Bitcoin and then you treasure, you, you, you sweep your cash flows into Bitcoin. And then, you know, you probably make like 500 billion or a trillion dollars because you did that if you're the first mover. Who will do that? Well, I mean, why wouldn't you do that, by the way? What, why hasn't Apple bought $20 billion of Bitcoin and made $100 billion overnight yet? The answer is they're afraid and they have political constraints. They're afraid of their shareholders. The accounting makes it ugly. So, you know, you wonder why don't they just bend over and make a trillion dollars? Remember when I tweeted to Elon, I said, you know, you, it, it, you know, don't, I didn't say buy a billion worth of Bitcoin. I said buy 10 billion worth of Bitcoin and then issue $10 billion of converts and buy 10 billion more and you make 100 billion and then all the S&P follows you and you make a trillion. Well, he didn't quite do that, right? I mean, he did a little, I'm okay with the billion and a half, but the point is, why doesn't someone do a $25 billion buy at Google? And the answer is because of politics and institutional inertia. And, uh, you know, some people don't want the trillion. Okay, so why doesn't a government do it? Politics, institutional inertia, when will they do it? Well, you know that this is the butterfly effect, right guys? It's like, how do you predict when someone gets whacked on the side of the head and knocked out of their comfort zone and decides to go and bend over and pick up the trillion dollars? <laughs> so I don't know, right? Like uh, my real point is any of a thousand people could do it and maybe none of them will do it but if you're betting that not a single one of them wants the trillion dollars, it seems to me like over a decade, somebody wants the trillion dollars. I just don't know who will have the courage and the clarity of conviction to do it. Right. Now, the real question is, what do you adopt as your treasury reserve asset? And if it's, if it's currency and currency derivatives in dollars, you have made the institutional decision to surrender 99.5% of your assets to the government over the course of, of uh, 80, 90 years. So I guess the metaphor would be, you know, what if I, you know, Anthony, what if I told you I was going to make you 20 years older so that I could be 20 years younger? <laughs> and what if, Mark, what if I told you I was going to take all of your children and accelerate their age to age 75 so that I, at age 65, could be rolled back to 30 because I'm so brilliant that I know your future and I should I should run yep. the country for you for another 30 years. What you really have is a parasitic situation where you're siphoning off the life force and the energy from uh, the working class to the property class, from the free market to the centrally controlled government mark to the government, you know, from market programs and free commerce to the wards of the state and to the government initiatives, right? And from from peacetime pursuits to wartime pursuits. Yep. And that's been going on since time immemorial for 10,000 years. It's the story of every empire, every city state, every country. And, and the only choice you had uh, in the last 10,000 years was maybe gold, but gold was never perfected money. It was always it's double imperfect, right? It's losing 2% of its value a year and also is getting debased by whoever controls the mint and it's also getting seized. So gold is like triple imperfect money. We didn't have anything that looked like theoretically perfect money until January 3rd, 2009. And then it took about 10 years of beating on it to determine that it wasn't going to crumple under some kind of uh, engineering mistake and so now here you are in the year 2022 and reasonable, intelligent people have concluded that this is engineered perfect money. That's like two, three, four percent of the marketplace. Ninety seven percent of the people yeah. don't even know what money means. And, and if you don't know what money is, then you couldn't actually go on a search for engineered perfect money. And uh, if you look at the Russians and the Chinese, they've all been hit with a two by four in the head 
And they've been invited to consider whether or not a Treasury Reserve strategy of holding fiat currency and credit derivatives is in fact perfect money. And now they know it isn't perfect. And they either have to look back to the 19th century and gold, which was the best idea for 10,000 years, but a crappy idea that failed 5,000 times. Or, and we know why, because it's centralized and you can debase it. Or you roll forward to the 21st century and you ask, is there a better idea? And Bitcoin is the better idea, and, you know, wrapped in all the crypto technology that it comes with. So what's going to happen, right? Intelligent people are going to watch YouTube and they're going to realize that the currency has a half-life, right? The U.S. dollar had a half-life of 10 years. And now it has a half-life of five years. Mm -hmm. And every other currency has a half-life of three years. Gold has a half-life of 30 years. Bitcoin has a half-life of forever, infinite, forever. Once people figure that out, you have a mass exodus, you know, an evacuation, not from Europe to the new world, but from real space to cyberspace. The money goes from analog to digital, and it goes from unencrypted to encrypted. And the only place you can run to save your life force, to avoid, in essence, what is a heat death or an energy death by being having all the energy sucked out of your body, is you have to encrypt your life force, right, on a network which is beyond nation state control. And there's one of them, right, Bitcoin, that's what we're talking about. And I think that's what happens, right? I mean, the intelligent people are going to exit, right, on a, you know, on an arc of encrypted energy. And, and the ignorant ones are not going to exit and they're going to have the life force sucked out of them. Right? And, I love and the fact that you, you can be on the right side of this. Do hit the like button and do subscribe to our channel.